a lot of economists used to argue that we could only have a more equal society by lowering economic growth. But once you understand the sources of inequality, that we, you understand that a lot of that inequality impedes economic efficiency, impedes economic growth. Uh, when you have a financial system that preys on the poor, that engages in abusive uh, credit card practices, when you have monopoly making profits, when you have uh, uh, lobbyists getting special corporate welfare for th their firms, those are all things that weaken our economy. Some other countries have uh, gone down the route of increasing inequality. Brazil is an example of such a country. One of the highest levels of inequality uh, and things were not uh, very good. But at that critical moment, the country came together. And since uh, President Cardoza uh, took office, and then President Lula, uh, a broad national consensus has developed that we have to fight inequality. And what's so striking that this country, with uh, one of the highest levels of inequality, has been doing better and better. We are the largest economy in the world. We could exercise more leadership uh, than we have. Um, and we've been among the foot draggers. Many of the uh, countries in Europe have been calling for stronger regulation of the financial system. They've been calling for uh, uh, curtailing the bank bonuses. Um, they've been calling for a financial transaction tax to uh, encourage banks to take a longer horizon rather than the short uh, horizon of, of rapid transaction, transactions. So a lot of people in other countries have been calling for reforms that should, we should have been advocating, and we've been the stumbling block. Our financial systems are very intertwined, very interlinked very under-regulated and very non-transparent. And one of the consequences of having a non-transparent financial system is it's very difficult to understand exactly what's going on. And another consequence of that combined with the intertwining of the financial institutions is there's a great deal of uncertainty. What would happen, for instance, if there were a European meltdown, if the uh, euro fell apart, if uh, one or more of the countries of Europe drop out of the euro, uh, we know it will have some impact, but we don't know the magnitude of the impact. Not even the European Central Bank or the Federal Reserve really understand this. A default on the Greek debt or a further default on uh, restructuring the Greek debt probably would not have a huge effect on the global economy. Certainly the very large restructuring that has already occurred did not have a very big effect. But Spain is very different. And uh, even more so if uh, a Greek, uh, dro Greece dropping out of the euro, Spain having a crisis, Portugal, Ireland, maybe Italy, those would be very big effects. And Americans should understand that while we are very uncertain about the magnitude of the effect, there is at least a very significant risk that that effect would be very serious. We can't be fully sure because of the lack of transparency of our financial system. And uh, I think it's uh, almost criminal uh, the fact that we haven't done more to insist on the more transparency of our financial system. Uh, to make sure that the regulators know more about what's going on. But as the J.P. Morgan episode illustrates, uh, a bank can lose uh, $2 billion, $3 billion. The press discovers it, not the regulator. Isn't that scandalous? If you have a society that's divided with the top doing very well and the middle and the bottom doing very badly, which is what's been happening in the United States, then there are all kinds of consequences 
We've seen in other countries around the world what happens when that divide gets larger and larger, and it's not a pretty picture, and it's the direction in which America is moving. So one of the reasons I wrote the book is to help Americans understand where we are, where we're going, and to lay out that there is an alternative.